What is up guys? It is the Turtle Girl. Welcome to the channel or welcome back to the channel. Today we're talking about some more ways to keep your axolotl tank cool. Those of you who have been watching the channel for a while know I made a video about this a couple years back, but since we're approaching August and I know that we're only just starting to get into the heat of the summer, I thought it would be a good idea to talk about some of these things because axolotls are one of those species of amphibians that really prefer to have their water in the low 60s. Honestly, if you keep them in warmer temperature or even room temperature water that's not as cold as they like it, you can be shortening their lifespan. It can create more stress. So it's very important to keep their tanks at an optimal temperature. So today I'm gonna to talk about a few ways to do that. Now, in case you didn't see my last video, the easiest and most convenient way to keep your axolotl tank cool is with a fan. You can probably see mine up here. I turned it on just for a quick second, but basically this creates evaporation. And when that water evaporates off of the surface of the water, it actually loses some of that heat. This can drop your tank by several degrees and it's probably the easiest and most inexpensive way to do it. This is just a fan I got from Walmart for like $5. You can find them from Amazon. Basically how I have this set up here is it's like zip tied up to the top and it blows the air across the top of the tank. In addition, my axolotl tank is filtered by a sponge filter. You can see it right here. And basically it has all these little bubbles rising up and through that, those little bubbles also help create surface agitation, which again is going to help with keeping your tank cool through evaporation. Another thing is that I never ever have the light on in the axolotl tank. Even this LED light, the only reason it's on is for filming purposes so you guys can see the tank and move mochi in the corner, but normally at all times I will have it off. And that is because anything that's producing electricity, anything, not producing electricity, anything that's using electricity, heat is a byproduct of that electricity that's being used. Maybe I can even show you if you give me a second. So you can see here, if I just point my little handy dandy, what is this called? Laser temperature gun? Infrared thermometer, like this. So you can see if I point my infrared thermometer at my tank, you can see that the outside, because this measures surface, is about 69 degrees if it wants to focus. But if I point it at the top of this light, you can see that the LED light, even if it's LEDs, is 89 degrees. So this light is actually putting off some heat just by nature of it being on. Regardless if it's LEDs, usually if they're fluorescent, they'll put out even more heat. So that's just something to be cognizant of. You can make your axolotl tank cooler by not having any like filter pumps running or lights running, that'll definitely help lower the temperature. So with all of this stuff that I have here, I'm normally able to keep my tank at a consistent 65, maybe 66 degrees, as measured by the thermometer here on the opposite side of my tank. But once the temperature gets warmer and if you don't have AC in your house, it can be really, really difficult to keep those temperatures down if the room temperature that you're in is like rising above 74, 78 degrees. So for instance, I don't have AC at my house. So when temperatures in Washington got to triple digits, it was like 110 degrees. My bedroom was probably like 100 degrees because I'm upstairs, the heat rises, there's lots of windows. And so I was really stressing out trying to figure out how am I gonna t keep my axolotl tank under 70 degrees when it's just so, so hot all around? And I found a couple tips that can really help, especially when you need a little bit extra to keep the tank cool. The first thing is making sure no sunlight is hitting your tank. Kind of the same principle with the lights. The sun obviously is a source of warmth and heat. And so if there are rays of sun hitting your tank, that can actually warm your aquarium quite a bit. So because I knew that the sunlight would be hitting this tank, Tank, I wanted to avoid that and block it from hitting it. So I took this little board and I covered the front of the tank with it. The other thing you can do is insulate. Insulate, insulate, insulate. Because the idea here is that you want the tank to maintain temperature. So what I did was when the tank was at its coolest point, usually at night, because obviously that's when the sun had gone down and we opened the windows and the room was cooled down back to kind of a reasonable temperature, I actually took one of my mylar blankets. Now, at first you might think, isn't that supposed to keep things warm? Actually, the way this functions is that it reflects back whatever temperature is on the inside and anything else will get bounced off, basically. So if you put this around something that's already warm, it'll keep it warm. 
However, it also works in reverse. If you put a reflective blanket like this around something that's cold, it'll actually help keep that cold in and not let it out. You could also use something like styrofoam, but this is what I had on hand and I actually found it to be very, very convenient. So basically what I did was I took this reflective blanket and wrapped around my tank as much as I could while the tank was at its coolest point. And so as you can see, I basically just wrapped it all the way around the tank and then I taped it around the front. Now the key with this is you have to do it when the tank is at its coolest point. So if like during the day you realize your tank is already 74 degrees, you can't just take the blanket and wrap it around because then your tank will just stay 74 degrees. What you wanna do is wait till the evening, wait till the tank cools down, maybe even till your room is more cooled down, and then you're gonna wrap it once the tank is as cool as it's gonna get. So once I had this wrapped, this actually helped me to maintain a temperature between like 68 and 70 degrees, which is pretty good seeing as the tank had gotten up to like 74, 75, 76 degrees when it was triple digits. As you can see, there was like this whole space because this blanket didn't fit all the way around. So that was where I just put this along the front so that the tank was basically completely covered, completely insulated. Um, and there's Mochi right up there. He did just fine. He weathered the storm and then once it went back to normal temperature uh, The rest of my measures were fine But just for when it's really extreme temperatures and you're kind of wondering what you can do I found that that was very very helpful for me in order to keep the tank cool Even though the temperature outside was super duper hot I'm gonna go ahead and remove this because it looks kind of ugly and that's that's the only thing with this solution is that it's kind of short-term a blanket like that kind of isn't a long-term solution because you probably don't want to have your tank wrapped in basically a giant piece of foil is what it looks like year-round because maybe you live in a climate where it's always hot. So one other thing to consider is an aquarium chiller. These can be fairly expensive, but basically it's a device that you hook onto your aquarium. It takes the water in, cools it, and then puts that cool water back into the aquarium to keep a consistent temperature. So that is definitely an option that one should consider looking into if a fan and aeration is not enough on a daily basis. Now people always ask, why can't I just like take frozen water bottles and throw them in the tank? Yes, you can do that. I would recommend like the little, I think they're either six ounces or eight ounces, the little half size ones. You can freeze several of those and put them in the tank, float them, and then once those are melted, rotate them out with a clean one. That's definitely a possibility. But again, it's not really a long-term solution. And the other thing to think about with temperature is the goal is to keep it as stable as possible. You don't want it fluctuating because that can actually cause more stress than the temperature just being a few degrees higher. Like for instance, imagine your temperature is like this. You want it to be like 64 degrees or 65 degrees. It's kind of just going along with evaporation that's pretty consistent. But if you're putting water bottles in there because it's like 70 degrees or something, and then you put a water bottle, oops, and it dips down a little bit, but then it slowly climbs back up till it's back to 70 degrees again, you put another water bottle, dip. And so you kind of get your temperatures going up and down like this, and that can actually be more stressful than just having the temperature staying at one not ideal temperature, if that makes sense. Basically the idea is consistency and trying to keep the temperature as low as possible to minimize stress, but at the same time, you don't want it fluctuating super big. Another thing to remember is that heat rises. So perhaps if it's a possibility to move your axolotl tank to a basement, or just if you anticipate it always being warm, keeping them in the basement, that can be a place where the ambient temperature is already a few degrees lower, and that can help you out in the long run too. Anyways, those are my thoughts for keeping your axolotl tank cool. Using these methods, I've been able to keep my axolotl tank in the 60 degree range, usually in between 64 to 68 degrees. You know, ideally it would always be at 64 degrees, but we can't always have that sometimes. We just do our best to keep our animals as comfortable as possible. I hope you guys found this helpful. If you did, feel free to drop a thumbs up, subscribe if you haven't already, and I'll see you all next Friday. Have a totally awesome day. Bye!